Hi, it's Natalie again. Um, this is Chatting with Nat. Normally I'm at Sisters in Music uh, page, but the live thing won't work. It's saying you can't get a connection, but I can get a connection here. Weird, huh? All right, today we're going to have CCO. Yes, CCO, Kristen Speller, Double Down Cosmetics. She's going to get online soon, but let's listen to her music because I like to stop things out with some music. Music, music, music. And now this. Before she comes on, she's switching gears because she wasn't able to log on either. All right, Kristen Spella. Uh, she is a CEO of Speller Productions, CCO of Double Down Cosmetics, and co-founder of From Here to There, Los Angeles. Uh, she is an 11-year survivor of domestic violence who has taken her survivorship experience and used it out of science to better her community. She is a 2015 Betty Fisher Legacy Humanitarian of the Year recipient on behalf of the Haven Hills organization of her service to her domestic violence community as an activist. She is awesome. Uh, Kristen and her husband Marvin founded Double Down Cosmetics in 2017 in Los Angeles, California. Um, Double Down Cosmetics is a non-GMO, organic, gluten-free, and cruelty-free cosmetic and skincare brand where we serve with purpose, creation, color, and representation for all. Kristen has been a musician for 16 years, a singer-songwriter, producer, and dulcimer player, writing for herself, other artists, and collaborating with other musicians. In 2009, she released her first com commercially released song, Bruised, off her album, Misguided Dignity. She stars in the film on Prime Video, Hanging with My Sisters. So we're working for her. It's the weirdest thing. I couldn't go live on Sisters in Music. Are they banning me? Did we say something? I don't think so. So what should I do now? Should I sing a song? I can sing a song. I, uh oh, nope, she's in. So we're going to let her in here. Hold on. Hold on, little girl. Hold on. Hold on. She's coming in. When she comes in, let's, let's put on her music on while she's coming in. That's actually a very that's a beautiful photo of you on your um Phoenix rising up. Oh awesome. Thank you. Thanks, Nat. Woo! I can't believe we're having all this time. It was weird trying to log into Sisters in Music, but being able to get on here. I know. Um, it's interesting because we were in the community today, so we actually drove to a, lo a different local location, but I actually went on your Sisters in Music, and I could get on fine, so I, I don't know. It's bizarre. It's bizarre. Maybe it's, bizarre. Maybe, maybe it's pandemic. Maybe it's 2021. I don't know what's going on here. Yeah. So how are you doing today? Oh, today uh, we're doing well. We're in the community today. 
um, with our unhoused brothers and sisters. So we had an incredible donation from our family, Just Meal Preps, and she made like from scratch at least 15 trays of food. Um, they um, are so incredibly grateful and obviously very hungry. So um, we try to do our part with our nonprofit, but it's important that, um, that we feed our folks. Amen. And I bow down to you for making all, all that effort. We need more people like you because there are so many hungry people out there. There's so many homeless people out there. There's so many people that need clothing on their backs. So kudos to you for um, creating an organization that does all that stuff because we need more of that. And the Thank government you. needs to help. Uh, yeah, um, I so much. <laughs> you are awesome. Let's talk about Double Down Cosmetics. Why get into the beauty? Why get into the beauty industry? And tell me what beauty means to you. <laughs> well, I think that there are two trains of thought when it comes to that. And right. with the, uh, just because, and I know that you get this, um, I've been an artist for 16 years. I've done multiple events. I've done red carpets way beyond the music spectrum. And Natalie, every single time I did a carpet, I posted a look. Everybody right. would ask, where's your makeup from? You know, what company? And so I started a blog. And then uh, my husband and I started in the wellness space. And be then we became wellness bloggers. Then it went into beauty. And it sort of evolved from there. But really it really was about um making sure that us black women had representation in the clean beauty space for our melanated skin tones and also right. and also um the other thing was that as a domestic violence survivor there were um potential things uh in traditional makeup that you know things are still being tested that right. could potentially add more neurological um, um to a survivor and so um it was all of those things that really um, I wanted to go into beauty. And to be honest, since I was little, I always wanted a makeup company. I would always shop with my mother at Sephora. We'd go in and she'd be like, punk, my nickname, which is lip balm I'm wearing today. <laughs> she would say, oh my gosh. I'm like, mom, I can't wait to have my own company one day. And it's just something that everybody And it's so so interesting, but I was always fascinated with her getting ready. The the eighties, the bright blues, the cover girl, the pink blush, the bright lips. I, I was like this in awe. I mean, I felt like when I when my mother would let me go and pick out makeup for her at like Rite Aid, I felt like I was in a flash sale, just pulling everything. <laughs> I love that. Now we talked about this uh, last night, but our audience here doesn't know this. Tell us about your your new project, I mean, with, with Walmart, your, your collaboration with uh, Walmart, which is exciting. Uh, but, yeah, uh, thank you. Um, Walmart has certainly been a dream come true. Um, I think that whenever you're, whenever you're in business and whatever your goals are, um, ours were always to get into retail. Mm -hmm. What that looked like a few years ago, we didn't really know, but... Right. When we went to Walmart a few years ago, I started looking at the shelves and I'm like, honey, I know we can be in here. This is the largest retailer on the planet. Of course, my husband says, honey, don't ever worry about the how. But of course, I, I was worried about the how trying to figure <laughs> it out. And I think that when you have vision, it really can lead to a multiple of things that allow you to grow in ways. Um, we uh, were fortunate to meet the Walmart team in October of 2020, which is when we knew we were getting into Walmart. Um, and so it was a long six months of waiting um, until we made the announcement during Black History Month. And that was something that um, we had spoken to them about and, and that we felt so honored. We didn't even have to do it during Black History Month, but for us it was important because we're the first Cape Verdean clean-owned beauty brand in Walmart, and we're a black clean beauty brand. Uh, right. And so I, I felt like, listen, it's Black History Month. I mean, this is what we're about. We're about, like my husband says, exceptionalism and excellence. And Amen. if you're going to do it, let's just do it then. And so we did. And so we have um, 
another announcement that's coming up soon uh, with Walmart, uh, potentially in the next couple of days. But um, the partnership has been fantastic. Um, their team has been so gracious with us. And I really want to say that because we all know that after the social unrest in our country last June, there were a lot of... Um, a lot of things that we heard in the beauty space, in every space really, right. but specifically in beauty, just because there's not enough representation and especially in clean beauty, um, that we knew that Walmart was really doing the work behind the scenes because um, we would check in and they would let us know. And of course, no retailer is perfect, but I have to tell you with us, they have been top notch and a wonderful partnership and we're only looking to grow. Uh, and so we have some things coming up. Awesome size. I'm so excited for you. It's so uh, well deserved. You, are, you and your husband are awesome people. Um, tell us about. I know that you've been featured in a couple of um, magazines, famous magazines. Tell us about that. Well, yeah. Um, so, again, going back to the social unrest, Marvin and I, we were fortunate to be, to be in two cohorts. One was Tower 28. They're a clean beauty brand. The founder, mm -hmm. Amy Liu, is Asian, and she felt as though from her perspective and her um, background at Sephora that there wasn't enough um, representation for black clean beauty brands. And so she started a program and we, we got into that out of hundreds of applicants. And then we also applied to Credo. Credo is considered the clean beauty Mecca. Um, okay. and so everybody sees like clean beauty at Target, clean beauty at Sephora. Credo sort of started this whole, um, inception with retail. And so we got into that program with that. We were in group press and then people started noticing our brand. So, um, and I have to give a shout out to the editor in chief of who, what, where cat callings, who wears the punk lip balm, who bought it mm -hmm. from us, who featured us three times in her magazine, um, in which we were so grateful for because it had an impact on our business. And then essence magazine in September, we've been, um, in Yahoo News, we've been in Beauty Independent, we've been in Vegue News, we've been in Beauty, I just said Beauty Independent, um, we, Indie Mood, we won the Indie Mood Awards, they're two fantastic indie queens who do these um, indie reviews, they have been with us from the jump, and, um, and also we just made Organic Spa Magazine in digital print, which we manifested two and a half years ago, so um, oh. we have more coming, it's just growing, and um, we were on the phone yesterday with, with some more editors. So um, people are really just taking a chance on our brand and it's been all organic and we haven't paid for anything. And I think it's a testament uh, to what we've built. And, right. uh, you know, we're just growing. We're learning. I'm learning every day. I think um, that's that's where the secret sauce comes in is just the growth. Because right. I certainly don't know everything. <laughs> no, I me mean neither. Some people think that I do, but I don't. I don't know. Uh, I don't know anything. I'm I'm learning every day. Everybody, you you can see certain things. You can see our successes, but we're still learning every single day. You learn from these experiences, and there's always something that's like, oh, really? I didn't even know that. So, it's all a learning experience, and and, and learning things on a daily basis is is great because you grow that way. So, kudos to you. How hard is the cosmetics business? How hard is it? Yeah. Ooh, girl. <laughs> I will, again, I will answer this two ways. There is, I want to say this, there is room for everybody. And Marvin and I, we don't come from a place of competition. We come from right. a place of collaboration. With that being said, we get this question a lot because they're like, Kristen and Marvin, the beauty industry is so saturated. We don't feel that it's saturated for what we are doing. And when you have vision and a mission, there's mm -hmm. nothing hard to accomplish. And I think that when people say, oh, it's just so hard, I don't have that mindset. I don't wake right. up with that mindset. Do I understand the challenges of it? Right. Certainly. I mean, obviously, I'm in the business. But when you're looking at it from a I would say a different lens in your own okay. perspective right and the challenge is within you and your own brand it's not within Estee Lauder or Mac or this or that it's it's within you and your brand um I think the other thing is that Marvin and I are incredibly innovative 
I think we have brought to the market things that are not in the market, like right. our, our uh, Miram complex. Um, it's trademarked and it's a serum and moisturizer in one. That was our decision because we knew we could do it. I think when you continue to be innovative and even if someone doesn't recognize it right away, it will be recognized. I think that you also have to understand that, listen, there are challenges, but what is your mindset? For us, we wake up every day, we hustle. Um, I'm learning so much because um, my husband is the CEO. I'm the CCO creative officer. And there's a lot of different dynamics within that, within operations and analytics mm -hmm. and and so it's just a matter of you believing in your brand and you pushing it forward. Amen. Intention, intention, intention and in manifestation. You guys are doing it. Now, Manifest for our audience that wasn't listening to us last night, please tell them how you create lipstick. Oh, okay. Well, we do lip glosses and it is a very, um, it is a, it, it's a, it's a, a colorful process because for us specifically um, there wasn't representation for black women in the clean beauty right. space. And so for us, you know, we start with a base and there's a lot of middle tones and overtones and neutral tones. And there's certain, there's certain um, tones of like a red per se. There, first of all, there are so many reds um, and some have blue undertones, some have pink undertones, some have beige undertones. We right. have to make sure that the red for us complements our pigment and our lips, which is not thought of with a lot of right. companies because we have golden neutrals, we have medium pink. The pigmentation in our lips is very different um, right. than other other races. And so we start to look at that. So that's the first thing that we that we look at. Then we go to the tones. Then we go to the undertones. Then we go to the different kinds of reds that we want to produce. And what does right. that look like? Um, and the same thing goes for blush, like we were talking about last night. I mean, we have to make sure um, folks who test for us, is it going to last 15 hours? For a lip gloss, is it going to last two hours? Can you wear it in photos? Does it photograph in low light? Does it photograph in highlight? What does it look like in the sun? What does it look like when you're being photographed at an event? So sometimes we'll go out, Marvin and I will take the camera, we'll do low light. How does it look in the low light? It, it's, right. it's that in order to create a product. Woo. Yep. That's a lot of work. That's a lot of work. Um, tell us what it's like work to work with your husband. Because you know some people can't do that. They can't do it some, whatsoever. They're like, no, some, no, 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 no. <laughs> some, like, bye, Felicia. Period. <laughs> um, it is the absolute best. And it is just... I, 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 like I said last night, I wouldn't want to work with any other person. He, he gets it. This is a man who 10 years ago was waiting for me at Mac makeup. I was sitting in the chair. He would look at my makeup artist. Got to give a shout out Erica Bazzarini Perez, all the technique of what he was doing because he believes. from the domestic violence space he has seen survivors needing this makeup to cover up wounds he understands the intricacy of it all and uh and so uh, my husband understands that on a million levels he understands it maybe even better than i am because when you have the purview of someone from the outside their perspective um can be deeper at times um than being in it truthfully it's been wonderful yeah. Do you believe that um, the view of what beauty is, is evolving and changing? Uh, public, publicly, yes. Privately, no. I think, um, I think a lot of brands are very performative. I think they do this to, um, to really uh, enhance their customer base, but behind the scenes... They're the same old, same old. Um, and I will say that I think that um, the representation that we've seen is the byproduct of performativeness. And so I don't know if it's going to stay. Um, hopefully it will. I, I think that 
um, consumers are smart. Consumers are smart people. I'm a consumer. I'm a smart person. So I know where I want to shop. I think that a lot of people are being very careful, especially in the past year with where they put their dollars. I think it's important them. Um, side of beauty as well um, with mission led brands right um, do you think that do you think that you'd ever share your brand your cosmetic brand um, with up and coming because I don't know I don't know I maybe you've done this already I was just thinking about those you know beauty schools and how they use a lot of different um, and I don't know where they get their cosmetics to be honest with you about allowing or, or servicing those people as well so that they can use your products like on, you know, people that are doing runway and all that stuff. Yeah. Um, we actually were in touch with a couple schools and then COVID hit. Ah, yeah, that damn COVID. Yes. <laughs> so <laughs> we definitely, because we've had a lot of beauty students that, that have told us, Kristen, we'll come down and help you glam up the domestic violence community if we're allowed to go in with you. Because, you know, with shelters, they I'm really the only makeup artist that's allowed in for privacy, confidentiality, because I've been doing this for so many years. And plus, they know that I'm a survivor. Um, but we have a lot of people and a lot of students that are like, Kristen, I'll volunteer with you. So once we can do glam up formally in 2022, um, we will be taking um, on the students as well. That's going to be so awesome. awesome. Yes, you've got um, You have to fly here for that. Yeah, no. Hey, I listen, I'm down. You yes. know, I support you and Marvin and all your adventures. I'm down. I need to get some some double down, too. I'm going to splash it on my face. And I'm yes, you're going to be glowing, and you've been so supportive. And, Natalie, we're inspired by you. Like, I know we're in the same, obviously, we're in the same music space, but I'm inspired by you. You know, you, you've, you've paved the way, in my opinion, um, for so many of us in the indie community and just looking at what you're doing and we're brands. And um, I just have to give you a shout out. You've done a phenomenal job. You've been, let me tell you something, you've been our sister since day one. Day one. Like, I just got to tell your audience, Natalie has not... <laughs> been there i've been there damn it but you've been but you've been there for two you've been there for me because these, these people don't know you i was on the red carpet or at the indie collaborative event and you were right there with her makeup bag she's like natalie i think you need a little shine here i'm gonna do this i'm gonna put it on your face and, I, and then i just glowed from there and i was sashaying on the red carpet with double down yes. on my face so no i really yes. appreciate it you've been so supportive <laughs> on so many levels. Um, and that's a, that's a testimony to who you are. You know what I love about you is that you don't, you know, we're all on the same same level. You don't say, oh, well, Natalie's doing this or, or this person's doing that and I can't be on their show and I can't do this and I can't do that. I love the fact that you're just authentic and you truly like to support um, other, uh, other, other artists and other brands, uh, other whatevers that are out there because you just want to be supportive. So thank you very much for that. Now, tell everybody about your musical family. Because you do music uh, too. Gosh, yeah, it goes back. Well, first of all, um, my father was a prodigy of guitar at seven years old. My father had his first band in Taunton, Massachusetts at 15 years old. So... When you're talking about my dad's band, you're talking about my dad, my uncle, babe, my cousins. I mean, it was all family because my father's like, you're going to be doing this with me. And plus, they were super right. talented. Um, and also, um, just, I mean, my entire family um, really are all musicians. And um, my cousins uh, are the Grammy Award winning um, R&B band Tavares and uh and Tiny, um, who's the youngest member of Tavares, our names are actually backwards. So my name is Kristen Lee Perry. His name is Perry Lee Tavares. And so we <laughs> always have a connection because we're both the babies of our families. And so when we used to shuck corn together for my mother, we would go to New Bedford, Massachusetts, which is, you know, where they lived. Um, they're from uh, East Providence, Rhode Island, and living in New Bedford. We would shuck corn for my mother. And we right. talk about so. Um, you know, they, they have certainly paved the way for Cape Verdean music. Um, and there are so many people in my culture that are just the most brilliant musicians. And I'm, I'm honored that I know them. 
I'm honored that people outside of my family that I know them because they're like family um, right. and grew up with just music. Um, I started playing the trombone when I was in fifth grade and my oh. sisters were on the saxophone and the flute. And so um, it was just sort of embedded into me. And then after my father died, um, I wrote a song two weeks later and Tiny was like, you know what, you need to you need to be and stay in Los Angeles because Hollywood's going to come knocking on your door and you have to because I was a poet. But I didn't really know um, the, I guess, I didn't really know too much about songwriting. I, 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 right. I knew it essentially, but in a different form. So um, it led me to here. Um, and it's been a wild ride. I've had so many experiences. And the one thing, you know, um, with my family is, you know, I always told them, I'm like, I'm going to do it on my own. And I always thank Tiny. Tiny never wants any credit. I just <laughs> have to give shout out. Every time I text him, he never wants any credit. I've mentioned him in the film that I was in, hanging with my sisters on Prime Video. I mentioned him in a plethora of interviews. And he, and he, you know what he texts me? You what? did this. I don't deserve any credit is what he always says to me. <laughs> There's so many people like that. Some people do just don't want credit. They just want to give you the full glory. But I'm like you. If somebody's done something for, for me, I'm going to let people know. Yeah. So tell me what's up for you musically. What's coming up? Um, so coming up, I have a lot of plans and Marvin and I have a lot of plans. <laughs> um, we uh, have an album that um, we were thinking about releasing it this year. But I, the reason why I haven't released, well, obviously with COVID, have to kind of skip over 2020 but prior to that I was doing shows because we thought in 2020 we were going to be in the studio we had it like right. all worked out um but Double Down has sort of taken up all of our time in our nonprofit, and so now we're thinking 2022 for an album um that is named after my hometown called Entering Taunton it is a love letter um to my late mother who was everything to me and um mm. I wrote 26 songs in 21 days while she was dying. And wow. honestly, um, I think that um, when you talk about a span of work or a career of work, just because music ha it hasn't been put out there doesn't mean that we don't have a plethora of music right, that's available. Right. I've right. written over 500 songs, but this honestly, Natalie, is the best work of my career, um, in my opinion. I feel like it, it just... It, it, it first of all, I've gotten more messages from the songs that people have heard live from this album, probably more so than well, maybe not with Phoenix, but on that level. But it's not even right. out yet, is what I say. So, um, a lot of people in my home team are very excited for this. Um, I've been able to dedicate songs to um, off of this album, um, to our dear friend who passed. Um, the city solicitor Jason Buffington um, a song off of Entering Taunton called Home because he had a special connection with my mother and I grew up with him since I was five and so this is an album for the people of my city it's an album from my ancestors and um, I really feel like um, this is going to be so different than anything that I've right. ever done that's awesome um, what you. advice would you give um, to uh, up and coming beauty experts or up and coming women or, or men that want to get into the cosmetics business? You know, the, a couple of things that I will say, I think a lot of people, um, when they ask for advice, I think people give traditional advice. I'm not a traditionalist, so I'm not going to okay. give that. Um, get a mentor, find mentors. I, I think now, um, understanding a little bit more about the beauty space. It is so imperative. Um, and the thing is that a lot of beauty founders, like we have mentors from Sephora, Ulta, Credo, um, you know, our mentors have worked for those corporations. Um, I think that people feel a disconnect because people feel that people are on a certain level here and, and they're down there. And that's not how it works because just because you've been in business for, for 20 years doesn't mean you can't learn from someone that's only been in right. the space. And I think that, um, you know, people are really helpful. I think that people really want to encourage up and coming brand founders. That's how Marvin and I are. And we, right. we, we, 
our mentors. I think it's so important and send emails. And even if, you know, they don't respond the first time or the second time or even the third time, it doesn't hurt to follow up and, and to really get rid of that fear. Because I feel like a lot of people feel like, oh, well, you know, she worked for this, you know, Sephora or this person worked for this Ulta. But you know what? Nine times out of 10, they're happy to hear that exactly. you know, mentor. Exactly. And so I think really utilize that and really learn your niche and really where you want to go. Um, I think for us, um, as a domestic violence survivor, everybody um, that's been with our brand knows that we're a mission led brand and that um, we, we donate to our community. Um, we have our glam up program. I cover up women's wounds, um, after they've been batted so they can keep their jobs, go on job interviews, um, or go to court. It's, it's imperative in our community. And so people know that when you buy from double down cosmetics, you're not just buying our brand, you're buying into our mission. Um, we right. donate, um, at the end of the year to, um, our domestic violence charity. And we look through that every year and um, I think have a niche. You know, if, if your thing is blue eyeshadow, then mm. make blue eyeshadows and, you know, see if there are, you know, um, organizations of folks that really like blue eyeshadow. And I think you really have to study and know your own niche. I would say research and find mentors. I love that. And you're so right um, today, because today I usually have my entrepreneurship with the Periscope. And that's what they were. One of the ladies that was talking, she said, they asked her, how'd you do all this? Said, or give us some advice. And one of the things she said, get a mentor, mentor, mentor. My French is coming out. Um, so, <laughs> so um, no, you're 100 percent right. You know, you can you can learn from the very best. And it's also about not giving up. Um, if you, you haven't heard from them three or four times, follow up, say, Hey, I'm here. I just want to learn, you know, I'm trying to get out here in this business and so we can all work together. Um, I love the whole idea of a collaborative spirit. You know, that's what yeah. sisters in is about. That's what it we're is. trying to relate to everybody. Um, and we don't have to be in competition. We just don't, there's room for everybody. There's room for thousands and thousands of musicians. There's room for thousands and thousands of people doing cosmetics. You know, we can all just learn to work together. Absolutely, girl. There, there, there is so much room. And this is what I love about you um, ladies at Sisters in Music because um, it's just I feel so supportive, um, you know, from all of you. And listen, there are folks that have reached out to us that have no clue where to start. I'm like, right. oh you with a b c and d because it's no it's no first of all i love to do it mom and i we right. love to do it no sweat off of our back to make connections honestly exactly. i mean it, it just and, and first of all i wasn't raised that way you know so Me neither. And my, Me neither. So that's that's not our love right, it. You know. yeah listen that that whole thing with with competition listen that that's a different kind of vibe you know what i mean yeah that's not our vibe. yeah <laughs> it's a totally we, different kind of vibe no, you're hundred percent right. Totally That's different. Why I love you. I love. You. And Natalie, I we love have some. You. We have some friends that have joined us today in the comments. I don't know if you can see them. I can't see too many, but I know I, we have some I, friends. I've seen some pop up. Some some saying hi, Kristen. Somebody's pressing <laughs> the heart button a hundred times. So there is love. Love. And this chatting with Nat. Seriously, love Kristen you. Spella. Now tell yeah. everybody where they, tell everybody where they can find you on the internet. Oh, the internet! Um, gosh, everywhere. Um, Instagram, Double Down Cosmetics, Facebook, all the same. Um, and Jennifer's here, Christine's here, my cousin Christine's here. Okay, you guys, you better follow Natalie. She's my sister in music. <laughs> Alyssa, I'm gonna connect my cousins with you on Facebook. Yes, this is a family affair. Yes, yes, yes. Um, and for our nonprofit, you can find us um, on Facebook. We're starting to build it up from here to there, um, LA. Our website is um, from here to there, la.org, doubledowncosmetics.com, walmart.com. <laughs> um, we're also in retail in Las Vegas um, at um, Herbally Grounded in um, Las Vegas and Henderson. And, um, and we have some... Um, more exciting news coming up where you'll be able to find us in some different locations. Awesome. Well, 
I'm so sorry for the techno. I'm going to have to beat oh my Instagram. God. Don't listen. It don't happens. even watch. It happens. And Natalie, yeah, and it happens. Sorry, I, I'm trying to hear. Also, I also always give my email out because like today okay. we have some emails for domestic violence. If anybody needs us, Kristen at KristenSpella.com. Email us. We're here to help. Email them. Yeah. Email them. Yes. And if you didn't get all of that, just Google her. Google Double Down Cosmetics. Google Kristen Spella. That's my new thing. There's I know. There's a t-shirt that says Google me. Just Google you know what? me. We need to for you because, I, first of all, I can't keep up with Natalie. I'm, okay, y'all, I can't keep up with her because, okay, now people like Chris, now I'm on Clubhouse. Now I'm feeling kind of official. So I'm on Clubhouse, y'all. But Natalie's Periscope, this one, this one, she tweets more than I do. You know, <laughs> I, my, my Twitter is, is more personal, you know. <laughs> but um, Natalie's everywhere. So um, honestly, it's like every day it's a new thing and it's like now linkedin says they're gonna have something to rival clubhouse and i'm like okay an another thing <laughs> for we are right um. oh, i wish i i need to come up with something lord have mercy I've, clubhouse is, is pretty good i've learned a lot on clubhouse but I I have you get no you get i'm on the notification thing and my phone is always like you can somebody wants you to come in but i can't be on there 24 7 however I have gotten a lot of information. So it's a really yeah. good tool to have. Um, Twitter has something called Spaces. I've tried that. It's interesting. It's not, yeah, yeah, yeah. And Mark Cuban, I think, is going to come out with something called Fireside. So everybody's trying to jump on the Clubhouse bandwagon, but they did it first. And it's pretty awesome. Eventually, people are going to be able to have their podcasts on there. You'd yeah. be able to monetize. I mean, you can learn a lot. There's, in fact, Sisters in Music want to do something um, soon. We're just trying to figure out what our conversation is going to be. Because um, we could talk about a lot of things. <laughs> a lot of things. Um, My friend is here, who I met in Clubhouse. Jennifer is here. Jennifer, I'm going to connect you with Natalie. Um, Natalie, Jennifer, <laughs> her room was so great, filled with upliftment and beauty from the inside out. It's awesome. Got to connect you all. I love it. You know, the more the merrier. I'm all about bring, bring them yep. on. Bring them on. Bring, bring them my way. You know, great to make the connections. You know, great, great to support. You know, when we have people on our podcast, well, one of the things I try to do is actually, if you have a video, I try to post it on Instagram. We do try to promote for free um, a lot of the artists that are out there um, so other people can know you because you know what? The world is missing out. We can't keep just listening to mainstream artists. Or mainstream yes. people, and because there's there's a lot of us, and we need to be seen and heard. We need we need to be seen and heard. We need to, um, you know, really take a page from your record book because you have really branded yourself um, in so many ways, and I learned from you. And of course, you know, we've taken some time off, but you know, there are a lot of opportunities for us indie artists, um, and I think. That you know, I, it's been interesting, I think, with COVID because I think people, um, I think there was a study where people said they listened to more indie artists during COVID than any other time. And you have to exactly. ask yourself why, you know, all of those things, because we deserve to be seen and heard. Um, our, you know, our music is timeless. And just because, look, I came out with my album 10 years ago. Um, people are still listening to it. People That's write us. Right. So there's a falsehood where people think, oh, I'm going to release an album and then because my album is about a year old and then you just leave it. No, you can no. keep you can keep pushing your, your album for forever. You can push singles forever. You it's until where you want to get it. That's what people just don't understand. Because I hear people, oh, well, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this single and then I'm going to do this other one. And then da, 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 da. And it's like, look, if you have the money to push all those singles at the same time, go for it. But if you have one single, push it to. Till, till you want to take it. it could, you could be pushing that thing for 10 years. There are people that have had songs, all right? Didn't do well the first time. It 50 years later, the song is a hit. Your you want catalog is very important. You want to know something? Um, Hollow Notes came out with She's Gone. It only, not only, that's, no. It hit number seven, okay, on the charts. My Family Tavares redid She's Gone. It was number one on the R&B chart. You see? That's what I'm talking about. 
that's oh. exactly what I'm talking about. So, you know, like the bottom line is there's something that you want to do, just do it. Don't worry about other people. The people always, well, I don't like it. No, I don't, me, I don't have time for other people. Do your thing. It's all about you. You know, lately I've been put, posting all these inspirational quotes about self-worth, self-love, be you. Uh, be your authentic self. That is my whole thing. Just be your authentic self. I've learned so much in the past six years about people. And you know what I've learned? I don't want the negativity and I want people that just can be real in my life. That's all. Absolutely. I think, um, I think that is absolutely missing and in absolutely you have to do you. And I think that, um, you know, I just really want to say this briefly because I, you know, I get asked, first of all, I, I don't, I'm not in the hater scope. That's not my vibe. Right. Right. What if people don't support you? What if people hate you? And I'm like, first of all, like I got interviewed and they were like, well, how do you feel about haters? Two words. I don't, I don't, I don't enter, I don't entertain that my vibration and my vortex is not even on that level. I keep posting on stories as if woo, 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 it's business as usual. <laughs> and so I don't have a place for that in my space. And so I think um, it's interesting because when, you know, the press was coming in, people were inboxing. They're like, wow, girl, you're getting a lot of press. And I'm like, okay, well, we've worked really hard. So, right? you know, what's the conversation? Like, do you, do you need something? You know, is something happening? Like, what's up? But it's just that. And it's like, I don't, I don't entertain that. Like, I'm not, I'm not losing sleep because of that and i don't really talk about right. that and no need to but i think i'm talking about this because we don't really talk enough about the other side of the people who are supportive i think that's right. lacking you do such a great job and i think we need to continue with that because that's how you elevate your community that's how Amen. you gather i mean i would i would never want you know another up and coming brand founder to say well i didn't know where to go and it's like, we're, we're right here and right. other people not helping. Like I, I just, Marvin and I, we don't, we don't roll that way. We want the next 20 clean Cape, Cape Verde and beauty brands to be in Walmart. Like that's the whole point. Yep. That's why you're the best. <laughs> Wait, Natalie, you have to write the song. I was thinking about it last night. I should have texted you. You need to write the song Goosebumps. Well, listen, girl, you were on to something. <laughs> I think so. Okay. Well, that'll be on the album that I'm currently writing that I need to write a couple that I need to write. Um, yeah. Goosebumps. You get you make goosebumps. Yeah. No, I think I would. Goosebumps. You get you make goosebumps. I have to leave you. Goosebumps. Goosebumps. Well, Christian, thank you so much for being on Chatting with Nat. It's been uh, my honor to have you on on Instagram Live and on Block Talk. If y'all missed yep. that, you got to listen to that. Also, we had a great conversation on that. Great conversation. Um, and I hope to see you again um, when you have more news and we can chat some more. And, you know, I will always support you, always be, be behind your back. You know, I will always have your back. In thank anything, you. In anything and everything that you do. So thank you so much. I, I, it was truly an honor. Thank you. And, and Marvin and I appreciate you. Um, we love you so, so much. You know, Marvin's like, that's my sister. I'm like, I know. So <laughs> we love, you, we support you and we thank you. And I just have to give a shout out for my sweatshirt to my ranch. Who made the Double, Double down, cosmetics. down cosmetics. And I have the standard blush on with it. And I used it as eyeshadow with the punk. Very monochromatic, very, I think, editorial. Beautiful. We're going to take you out with. The rest of Phoenix rising up. Okay.